Hello friends, Steve Maki here back on the trail with you toward the discerning life, the journey that we're sharing together over these 10 weeks. And I want to welcome you to my living room. Uh, we live in an old Cape style house and this living room is very small, uh, but it's very significant for us and our family. And I uh, spent a lot of special times in this little room over the years. And I'm here because uh, you'll notice behind me is the mantelpiece and a mirror, an oak mirror. And behind that oak mirror is where we scraped away multiple layers of wallpaper when we first purchased this house many years ago and found the letters to our last name, A-C-C-H-I-A. -C -C but that was it. It didn't have an M. It had a CH in front of it. The Kiakias owned this house before we did. And amazingly, when we stripped the wallpaper, we found the letters to our name appearing right before our eyes. We were marveling at that as uh, newlyweds and new homeowners. And we've thought about that many, many times since. And I wrote about it in this particular chapter as we talk about relational presence, what it means to be present with and for one another. And on that particular experience, that season of our life, we felt known and loved by God and by the people of God who helped us make this home a reality. Specifically, my parents who lent us money to just help us get in and get this thing going and forever indebted to them for their generosity and their love to us. So relational presence, when we talk about the discerning life, uh, we've been talking about the biblical text. We've been talking about a life of prayer. We've been talking about how the scriptures have outlined for us what it means to live a discerning life through the experiences of the people of God that have been written about uh, throughout the Old and New Testament, and particularly through the life of Jesus. And we're looking at him specifically throughout this book. Uh, but today I want us to be thinking about our relationships. Who are you known by? Who comes alongside you? Who believes in you? Who, who is there to not only be present with you, but for you? I've had my handful of uh, experiences when people are there uh, for me, with me, but not for me. And that's not fun. They may be there, present, physically present, but when they're not for me, it means they're not attending to me. They're not listening to me. They're not, they're not noticing my heartbeat. And what I'm expressing my heart's desire in this chapter is that we formulate communities filled with the grace and the mercy and the love of God. And it's based in what I would describe as pure listening. Now, I say pure on purpose. There's no such thing as completely pure listening. But we want to get to that place in our relationships. Otherwise, we're listening with, with a motive or, or a, an intention behind it. No, you want to listen to people purely because their voice matters, their story matters. They matter. So we want to learn how to listen. What's the state of your soul? How are you and God doing? How are you really handling life in all of its hardships today? I'm, I'm, a, I'm concerned, friends, that in this life, in this world, we're not listening to each other anymore. We, we've got opinions about each other, but we don't have withness. And it's our withness that shows our, our, our love. And so press the pause button, please, on how well you're being listened to and how well you are listening to others. And so when we look at some of the spiritual practices, uh, the three for this particular chapter are presence, listening, and grace. Presence, being fully present with one another. Not, not, not looking at your cell phone and not being you know, focused elsewhere, but no, being focused on the person that you're with, being fully present. And when you're fully present, as I say in this chapter, give each other eye contact. That's what my wife has taught me. It's all about the eyes. She says, Steve, I need to see your eyes. And when she sees my eyes, then she knows that she's got my ears and my heart and my attention. But when she doesn't see my eyes, she, she doesn't see that I'm caring for her. So I'm being present, but not attentive. So in our relationships, when we're to become discerning, it's when we're fully present when we are good, pure listeners, without any ulterior motives attachments to that. And thirdly, when we are offering grace. 
Imagine what your home would look like, your friendships would look like, your church would look like, your organization would look like if, if, they, were, if, if they were filled with grace. And that's what I'm encouraging today. Be a graced person, filled with grace. Because you are a recipient of unmerited grace. You didn't deserve it, but God gave it to you. So let's undeservedly give grace to another. And let's watch how our discerning life comes alive. I'll see you next time, friends.